what can you say more about it and uh, the, uh, the success story oh, you are now enjoying? And what is your next plan for, for your ministry that God has uh, appointed you or chose you to do? Okay. Um, one of the mistakes that Christians um, and, and do, which the devil has um, used against us, um, we magnify the faults of other believers. You know, the truth is, believers came from different backgrounds and denominations and class. And so they always try to interpret the Bible based on their own understanding. And God works with people based on their own understanding. But the problem we have is sometimes we, we want people to be at our level of understanding. And so we get impatient with them. We can disagree on methods. We can disagree on understanding, but it doesn't mean that just we need to act as enemies. Apostle Paul had a disagreement with one of the apostles, but never did you see in the Bible that they began to say bad things about each other. Though they parted ways, but they did not bring, they didn't bring dishonor to the body of Christ. And so some people are still at a certain level. That's why the Bible tells me, judge nothing before it's time. If God has ordained set someone to manifest his character at a certain level, maybe the journey is going to take this person three years. And when he's just at his second year, you begin to judge him. That means you are indirectly mm. interfering with the purpose of God. That's yes. why the Bible tells me, judge nothing before it's time. Then the second question you asked me, you said, so what is the next plan? Well, preachers of the gospel, we don't retire. We die in active service. Uh, if Jesus tarries, we're still going to reach before Jesus comes. We're still going to reach out to nations of the world using um, the media. And hopefully when this pandemic is over, we're going to have conferences in different parts of the world. And of course, we're going to, we're going to invade or we're going to visit African nations yeah. Because the, the, the we have been doing that before. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that more <laughs> because the people are very receptive. And finally, uh, while we're doing that, we shouldn't forget that the gospel needs foreigners. The gospel needs those who are going to take over from us. Because the gospel you and I were preaching, we were not the original owners of the baton. And so it was handed over to us. We also need to start making preparation through leadership and empowerment programs <clears throat> to hand over the same button to others, even while we're still alive. I don't want dead people don't hand over a runaway is dead cannot hand over the button. You hand over the button when you're still alive. One more question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's our plan. And yeah. that's what your you're the vision keeper of team <laughs> ministry. But, uh, you know, you cannot uh, calculate the mind of the people. Some will be very sweet. Some look like they are so obedient. But they have their own motives inside their heart. So, but of course, what can I say? You're a prophet. You can discern it. You can, God will tell, tell you. But still we're a human being. How can we perfect it that the next person we will hand over, will have the same vision with us. And this is what Paul had to tell Timothy. He said, hand over to uh, make elders, hand over to faithful men. Um, our duty is to make sure that we, we empower people. But there are some who are going to take the, the training in good faith 
because they want to carry out God's assignment for their lives, and there are others who will just um, come for the fun of it. Paul said this. He said, some preach the gospel because they're sincere, but others preach the gospel out of envy. Out of envy. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Christ is still being preached. So if someone is not being serious, just still. as long as they're preaching the gospel, leave them. But for those people we need to empower more, uh, we look at the faithful ones and we give them more responsibility. Bishop Tony are always misinterpreted by the people. Uh, like me, the first three years we met, everything I'm thinking, because I'm a businessman, I'm, I'm full of wisdom, everything I'm, I, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, businessmen can calculate very sharply. You know, we can calculate if this man is good or bad. And after that, when I present it to you, your mind, your answer to me or your decision is different from what I'm thinking. So I say, wow, how can it be? So, but at the end of the tunnel or at the end of the discussion, you are right. So that's why I told you that time that, oh, Bishop Tony, I want to learn how to be a prophet. Yeah, but at the later time, I say, I don't want to be a prophet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, nobody can, can learn how to be a prophet. Ah. You but there are school of prophet. You don't go to a school of prophet because it is the oh. Spirit of God that gives, distributes the Spirit as He wills, not as you will. Then Paul had this to say that among all the gifts, you should desire the prophetic. Now, there are three levels of the prophetic. So you don't need to be a prophet for you to be led by the Spirit of God. And if you're led by the Spirit of God, what did the Bible say? That how be it when the Holy Spirit comes, the Spirit of truth is going to teach you all truth. It's going to show you of things to come. That means as a believer... Every believer has the power to walk in a certain level of the prophetic unction. Now, there are three levels. The first level is the spirit of prophecy. Every believer carries a spirit of prophecy. What is the spirit of prophecy? It is a testimony of Jesus Christ. And as long as you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you all things. That is prophecy. Then the second level of the prophetic it is the gift of prophecy. Mm. Then the third level... By the way, uh, as we, we are g going together for the ministry, I'm wondering how come... I don't like to be a prophet now, <laughs> but I'm wondering how, can, how I can and discern and easily I can understand what the people are thinking, what is in their mind. I say maybe that's a <laughs> gift of prophecy. Yeah, then the, the, the third level of the prophetic is the office of the prophet. Now, you don't need to be operating in the office of the prophet for you to flow in the prophetic. If you allow the Holy Spirit to lead Bishop, you. Bishop, I think you are operating in the office of the prophet because you are, every year, you are telling what, what will happen in the whole world. Like the, last December, you prophesy again. Uh, so many prophecy about the world, what will happen. And... Uh, uh, for how many years already? Maybe for 10 years or 12 years? You are, every year you are prophesying about what will happen to the whole world and it all come to pass. Yeah, I cannot take credit for that. Is that office of the prophet? Well, I leave history to judge <laughs> that. I can't take credit for that. You are so humble. In the sense that the Bible tells me in the book of Psalms that unless the Lord builds the house, those who build, build in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, those who watch, watch in vain. Now, the body of Christ, if they understand spiritual authority, every member of the body of Christ can experience the prophetic. Because the Bible tells me in the book of Psalm 133, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in unity. It is like the bird that passes through Aaron to the body, that pa passes through Aaron to the body. 
That means everyone can partake of that same grace when we don't break our ranks. That is why if you see churches where they respect the, the anointing that comes from the top, they automatically begin to function. Like Saul, he was not a prophet, but because he encountered, he encountered a group of prophets, he began to prophesy. Mm. And they said, is Saul also among the prophets? Fellowship with the right people with the, who have the prophetic. You can drink from the... Yes. So if the man. body of... This is what unity does to the body. For instance, if the body of Christ is united and all of us are gathered in one place, the gifts will begin to flow from the top and everyone. Another example is when Moses chose some leaders, suddenly the spirit that was in Moses was made manifest in the lives of those leaders, even mm, those who yeah. deserved it and those who, didn't, who, does, who do, do not deserve it, all by the grace of God. And now we are living in an era where the grace of God is much more manifest. Because the Bible tells me in the book of, the Bible tells me that, and in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, your young men and daughters. They will see, they will have revelations. That is why it's time for us to strategically position ourselves so that we can hear and feel and operate from the mind you know, of from the, the aspect, the 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 the, the 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 throne room of God. What can you say about the uh, young men will see vision, old men will dream dreams. So it does it mean I'm an old man? I will dream dream, <laughs> no more vision. <laughs> well, the difference is, old men, they are almost rounding up. Mm. But young men, it's the sad part. <laughs> Young men, vision gives you an insight of what you have to do. Mm. Old men already know what they were called yes. to do. So, so they dream dreams. Mm. But vision is different from dream. Because vision yeah. also helps you to understand your life. To move forward. Purpose. Yeah. Wow. Nice, uh. Nice For instance, what UCAP Radio is doing now is visionary. Mm. It's powerful. It's excellent. Because when I came to the Philippines, one of the things that struck me, I said, how come the secular artists are doing all these things? What are the gospel artists? And I didn't know that God had placed it in the heart of some revolutionary people wow. who are about to do something that's never been done before. So yeah. I want to say thank you to you, Cap. Keep doing what you're doing. What you're doing now is an act. It's a visionary manifestation of purpose. Yes. And of course, uh, talking about you, Cap, I, uh, I realized that they are the only uh, organization that is doing this thing. All the past... Uh, all the past uh, organization about uh, artists, they are all gone. No more commitment. Uh, maybe they are daydreaming already. But uh, it's good. Uh, I saw them and uh, I saw their vision, Bishop. And so why don't you talk to our uh, audience? They are all over the, the world. And tell them, challenge, challenge them. Tell them, uh, maybe some of them are, are enlightened, some are not yet. So maybe you can say something to encourage them and to okay, empower Okay, to my them. audience, believers and non-believers, I want you to know that music is very crucial in this day and age. Um, when we get to heaven for believers, no one is going to prophesy again. No one is going to pray again. No one is going to dance again. But we all are just going to be doing music. So if you don't know how to sing, it's time for you to learn how to sing. Music is the only ministry that's going to be retained in heaven. 
And so it's an eternal ministry. A, min a ministry that spans from, etern from now till eternity. Prophecies we cease. The apostolic we cease. The pastoral we cease. Teaching we cease. For music we never ever cease. Then the second thing I also want to say is this. It's been scientifically proven that music is medicine to the soul. Mm. It helps take care of depression. It helps take care of all the crises you're going through. Then finally, for my audience who are not yet um, saved, secular music can be very interesting. Secular music can be very interesting but sometimes there are scary secular music. So you have to be careful about the type of music you listen to if it's not the good news. There is this story of a young man who said he listened to a violent secular music. He went home, he took up his gun and killed some people because the spirit of the music drove him to do that. But concerning UCAP, all the music coming from UCAP, they are all gospel. And gospel music is the good news. It is godly. And when you play the undi undiluted gospel music of God, just as David played the harp excellently and demons left Saul, people who are held by all manner of diseases will be set free. That is the essence of listening to gospel music. It's the music that re transforms your mind uplifts your spirit and gives you hope. Thank you for uh, this wonderful time that uh, uh, you are our special guest, Bishop Tony. And uh, of course, thank you. And uh, until then, uh, God bless everyone. Na na na. 
na 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 Believe na believe ako sa iyo Believe na believe ako sa iyo Believe na believe ako Todong todo Believe na believe ako sa iyo Believe na believe ako sa iyo Believe na believe ako Todong todo Hana hana Kamang hamang ha Kataas taasan Kalugod lugod na Diyos Kami kabighani Kagilagi lalas Kagandang pangalan Siya si Jesus Kahanahanan Kamanghamanghan Kataas-taasan Kalugod-lugod na Diyos Kami kabighani Kagilagilalas Kagandang pangalan Siya si Jesus Bilib na bilib ako sa'yo Bilib na bilib ako sa'yo Bilib na bilib ako Todong todo Believe na believe ako sa iyo. Believe na believe ako sa iyo. Believe na believe ako. Todong todo. Believe na believe ako sa iyo. Believe na believe ako sa iyo. Believe na believe ako. Todong todo. Believe na believe ako sa iyo. Believe na believe ako sa iyo. Believe na believe ako. Todong todo.